Welcome to our Students with King Nonviolence Spotlight Series. Today we are going to tell you about an amazing civil rights leader who helped change the world. When you hear his awesome story, it will hopefully spark something in you to make a difference and make your community better for everybody. Our spotlight person is Mr. Hank Thomas. When he was a young man, he went through social injustice. This means he experienced some things that he knew were not right and some people who were not treating other people right. So you know that was not good. What did he do? You guessed it, he decided to do something to make a difference. Mr. Hank Thomas is our spotlight person for this session. A civil rights activist and entrepreneur, Henry Hank Thomas was born in Jacksonville, Florida in 1941, but spent most of his childhood in St. Augustine, Florida. He received a scholarship to attend Howard University in Washington, D.C. At Howard University, Mr. Thomas participated in lunch counter sit-ins. Lunch counter sit-ins took place back when African Americans were not allowed to eat inside some restaurants. Lunch counter sit-ins are when a group of people would sit in a restaurant at the lunch counter to demand that African Americans be allowed to eat there. Mr. Thomas was also a founding member of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, better known as SNCC. Mr. Thomas received numerous awards for his civil rights activism. Yep, you can call Mr. Thomas a hero because he made this world a better place. He was also a great businessman. Would you believe that Mr. Thomas owned McDonald's restaurants, a Burger King restaurant, and a Dairy Queen? He sure did. And if Mr. Thomas could do all of this, you can too. In 2010, he was inducted into the Atlanta Business League Men of Influence Hall of Fame and received the 365 Black Award given by McDonald's Inc. In 2011, he was also inducted into the International Civil Rights Walk of Fame. He was a lifetime member of the NAACP and served on the Board of Trustees for Morehouse School of Medicine. Now let us watch our Students with King Spotlight feature with Mr. Henry Hank Thomas. Back in the bad old days of segregation or apartheid in this country, the laws in the South stated that if I got on a bus, Greyhound Trailway bus, I had to go to the back of the bus in order to uh, ride on that bus. And if there were no seats available in the back of the bus, those three seats in the back of the bus, then I had to stand up. I didn't believe that was right, and the rest of us did not believe that was right. So the Freedom Rides were, there were a total of 13 people, six whites and seven um, uh, blacks. And our job was, and our goal was to ride uh, integrated, that is the whites would sit in the back and the blacks would sit up front. And because we did that, we encountered a lot of violence. I was arrested a total of 22 times Two times on the Freedom Ride, the Ku Klux Klan tried to murder me simply because I wanted to sit in the front of the bus. That's the way things were in this country 55, 60 years ago. So the idea of the Freedom Ride was to get those laws and those customs changed. And as a result, a lot of us uh, endured a lot of dangerous uh, on the part of uh, the white supremacists and on the part of police officers as well. During the Freedom Rides, twice the Ku Klux Klan tried to murder me. And one time in Winsboro, South Carolina, when I was arrested for going into a white men only restroom, the police took me out of jail at night and took me to a Klan meeting. It was a Klan mob that was waiting to lynch me. 
And the only way I escaped was I was able to outrun them. And then a black man who was a World War II paraplegic veteran drove up beside me and I jumped into the back of his car and that was the only way I was able to escape. But I want you to imagine, just go back 60 years ago, those of you who are sitting here in this audience, black and white, would be immediately arrested by the police. Your teachers would be perhaps beaten up just because you're black and you're white or you're Christian and Jews and you're sitting here together. That's the way things were in this country, in the South, 60 years ago. It was the same as what you read about in South Africa. They call theirs apartheid. Here it was called segregation. We had to change that. Now, not only was I almost killed in South Carolina, two weeks later on Mother's Day, the bus that I was riding in was attacked by the Klan again and because they could not get aboard the bus to beat us up, they set the bus afire. When they set the bus afire, they held the door so that we could not get out. And the idea was for us to be burnt alive in that bus. The most fearful moment when I truly thought that I would be killed was when I was on that bus that was set afire. At that moment, with the crowd outside yelling and screaming, when the bus was burning, I thought I had a choice. If I got off of that bus, I would be beaten to death. But if I stayed on the bus with it on fire, I felt that if I took a deep breath of the toxic smoke, that would put me to sleep and that would be the way that I was going to die. So for all practical purposes at age 19, I had decided to commit suicide. So that was the most fearful time of my life. But even when I got off the bus, a man came up to me with a baseball bat and asked me if I was all right and I nodded my head. And the next thing I knew, I was on the ground because he had hit me. The men then, started coming toward me to, I guess, since they knew that I wasn't dead, and I had to grab a police officer to use him as a shield. That police officer pulled his gun, and I just knew he was going to shoot me. As a matter of fact, I have a picture of, for whatever reason, I put my hands over my face. So during that particular time, those were the times that I thought that I could never survive that. I have those pictures of me getting off of that burning bus and they're in my kitchen or in my dining room and I have to look at it to realize this was the way things were 60 years ago. And how I survived that is only through the grace of God. Thanks for joining us for our Spotlight Story with Mr. Hank Thomas. As a member of the beloved community, Mr. Thomas did his part to change the quality of life for all people. If you would like to learn more, please check out our website at thekingcenter.org. Special thanks to our sponsor, the National Football League, for making this moment possible.